Hey, good evening, and I hope everyone is having a blessed Sunday. Welcome to another edition of Contemporary Living with Farming Hill. I am one of your hosts, Andre Hill, and tonight I'm going to get into a message, and we're going to talk about being patient in the midst of your prayers. Once again, we're going to talk about being patient in the midst of your prayers. So the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightfully dividing the word of truth. So understanding when you're reading your Bible, it's very important that we rightfully divide the word of truth. And you hear us say that a lot on here. So what does it mean to rightfully divide the word of truth? So pretty much when you're rightfully dividing the word of truth, you understand the Bible as a book that gives you progressive revelation. So throughout, from all the way from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible tells a story. And if you don't follow the story, you will get lost in the midst of your studies. So we, we're dividing truth from truth. And if you don't understand the Bible, and if you don't rightfully divide the word of truth, you will find yourself on the wrong side of history. So understanding that the Bible always taught, you know, when you're studying the Bible, I, 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 I always tell people to make sure that you study the word of God correctly. And always ask yourself the five questions. Who, what, when, where, and why? Who God was talking to, what God was talking about, when did God make that statement, where, and why did God make that statement? So if you don't understand prayer, and if you don't understand the scriptures, you'll begin to find yourself getting angry with, with God, and then you'll begin to have a mentality that God does not exist. So tonight we're going to dive into it quickly, and we're going to talk about being patient in the midst of your prayers. So what is prayer? Prayer is simple. Prayer is simply talking to God. And I'm going to take you right into James chapter 1, verse 2 through 8, as we launch this message tonight called Being Patient in the Midst of Your Prayers. All right? So James tells us, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. It goes on to verse 5 and says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So understanding when we ask God things, and remind you, when we ask God for things, it's very important that you understand that when it says un upbraided not, that means when God is God is not looking for fault in you. So don't so it lets you know that we serve a wonderful God. He's not find, trying to find fault in you. He's not trying to see what you did wrong. So that's why James tells us upbraided not. Okay, in verse number five. Verse six reads, and this is key. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth like a wave. For he that waveth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7 reads, For let not that man think, it, think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So first of all, when you look at James, it's very important. I highlighted at the bottom in James 1.1, 1, 1, we got to ask who James is talking to. And in verse 1, it clearly tells us that James is simply talking to the 12 tribes of Israel in this scripture. How do we know that? Because verse James chapter 1, verse 1 identifies who James is talking to. Now, you as a member of the body of Christ, if you apply the scripture to your life, I'm going to let you know tonight that you will be very disappointed in God. Because how many times have we asked God something and it has not come to pass and it tells you in verse 7 for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord so that man should not think that he he's not going to receive anything of the Lord so if you understand your Bible you, you understand Matthew Mark Luke and John and I know many of you read the scriptures and it says ask and it shall be given that is correct for the nation of Israel under the law and let me get some clarity for you Whenever Israel asked for something under the law, it was given to them. No questions asked. It was given to them. So what about today? When we ask for 
that husband, that wife, that job, that car, or the stuff we're going through, we say, well, God, I prayed to you, and you have not answered my prayers. Well, we're going to look at that tonight, but understanding in James chapter 1, verse 1 through 8, that James is simply at, talking to the nation of Israel. And he wanted them to believe that he was going to perform and give them the desires of their heart. And under the law, he did. They didn't have to ask two and three times. They didn't have to ask five or six times. God provided for the nation of Israel. But tonight, we're going to look at the age of grace, the time frame that we live in today. And you're going to find out that, then you're going to find out why God is not answering your, answering your prayers that you want. Okay? And, and, and so that's what we're going to look at tonight as I move on. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 4, it reads, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Verse 3, very important. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, a, and patience experience and experience hope. So understanding that when we pray to God, one of the things that one of the attributes that we all need, including myself, is patience. And one thing about we understand that when you're patient, that you begin to learn God. When you're patient and you understand understand the scriptures, you become you become comfortable and you become comforted in the scriptures, knowing that God will answer your prayers. I'm gonna back back up to James, and I like how James, when he's even talking to the nation of Israel in verse two, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, meaning that you're going to go through some trials and tribulation. Even the nation of Israel went through some trials and tribulation. But in verse 2, it said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So the trying of your faith, it worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work. And a lot of times, we as individuals, we don't want to be patient. We want what we want, when we want it, and we want it right now. And that's, that is our mentality. And when God does not answer us right now, we begin to get frustrated. We get angry with God. But when you don't understand the scriptures, when we don't, understand who God is and when, when we don't know how he operates under the age of grace where we live today then we become frustrated as we get as I get ready to move on so understanding when I first read out read to you in James God is talking to the nation of Israel and under the age under the law Israel whatever they asked God for God had given given had given it to them with no with no questions asked so that's why a lot of times we get frustrated when we read scriptures like James, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we get frustrated with God and say, well, the nation of Israel, they asked and God gave it to them right then and there. But good God, why are you not answering my prayers today? My mom is sick of cancer. My brother is ill. I lost my job. I lost my home. But Paul tells you, and even James tells you, let patience have her perfect work. And we're going to look dive more into this message tonight on being patient in the midst of your prayers. As we move on to Romans chapter 15, 1 through 5, verse 1 reads, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. So now we see here Romans, Paul is dealing with us as individual caring for other people. And a lot of times, when we pray to God, we're praying to God like he's an ATM machine. Lord, I want this. Lord, I want that. But how many of us have actually made our life and our prayer life about somebody else? Hmm. Think about it. How many of us have made our life about someone else versus ourselves? And I'm a firm believer that when we take care of God's business, he will take care of ours. When we put God first, how many of us actually wake up, wake up in the morning and say, God, what can I do for you today? God, who can I bless today? And so that is, Roman, that is what Romans chapter 15, verse 1 through 5 is talking about. Let's read on. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Verse 4 reads, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, 
And I'm going to stop right there. The things that was written aforetime were written for our learning. So, as you see in James chapter 1, verses 1, I was letting you know the history of Israel. And when they asked God for something, God answered that prayer for them or whatever that request was. And I'm going to show you today under the age of grace how God deals with us versus how he dealt with man in times past, especially the nation of Israel. As I read on, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures may have hope. There go that word again. Through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we may have hope. And see, when we understand God's word, and when we dive into it and study it, we have comfort and we're patient, knowing that God is going to bless us, especially today in the age of grace. And understanding this here, God may not bless us the way we want him to bless us. He may not come when we feel that he should come, but you I can, you can rest to assure that he's going to come and, he, and he's going to answer according to his will, as we're going to see that shortly in this lesson tonight. As I read verse 5, Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, toward, one toward another according to Christ Jesus. So verse 5 tells us that God is a God of patience. And just because we get on our knees and just because we ask doesn't mean that he's going to give it to us right then and there. Why? Because we just looked at it because he is a God of patience. And we as ambassadors of Christ, God wants us to be patient as well. See, one thing about patient, patience is give us experience. Perfect example is any, if any of you have kids out there. And you try to tell your kids they're hard-headed, they're knuckleheads, and you try to tell them what they should and shouldn't do. Now, you as a parent, you have experience. Because some of the things you went through, it gave you experience and it gave you patience. And we as parents, we sit back like I told that rascal. He'll be back and you're on the phone talking to your girl. He'll be back or she'll be back. I done told them 20 times what they should do. And then guess what? About a week or two later, they call you up like, Mom, Dad, I should have listened to you. You were right. Ain't that something? So that lets you know that through our walk and our journey with, in life, that we learned some things through patience and through suffering, that we was able to go help somebody else, that we were able to go impart something else to somebody because why we've been through it we know it and so that's why in Romans chapter 15 verse 1 through 5 this is what it's talking about not pleasing ourselves but pleasing someone else and I guarantee you when we make our life truly about God not about having a house not about having a wife not about having a husband not having not about having this big old car and everybody seeing how I dress and how everybody can see all the weight I've been lost and things like that when we truly make it about ourselves and blessing other people God will continue to bless us not saying and don't get me wrong I'm not saying that you shouldn't pray to God for for things and, and wants and stuff like that for your desires I'm not saying that but I'm saying that when we make our lives truly about God, then he will go about taking care of our business for us as well. It reminds you of any business. If any business, if you, you ever in business, you're a person that's in business, if you begin to bless somebody else in business, that partner or that person you're thinking about working with, guess what? In return, they're going to bless you as well. And so it is, it, so, and so it is with God. When we make our life, we make our, our journey truly about Christ, he is just and faithful enough to bless us as well. As I move on to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse three, six chapter 6, verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, but fall out the righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. So here it tells you, and Timothy, he tells you, what we need to be following after of? Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. See, when we follow after these things, I can rest to assure you that God is going to take care of your business as well. And guess what? If he don't take care of my business, I have enough confidence in the scriptures to know that if he don't take care of my business, that he still was able to take care of my business for me. And that's why Job said, though he slay, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Will we trust in God tonight? 
when he don't answer the way we want him to answer? Will we, be, will we believe in God when we, he don't answer the way we feel that he should answer? See, this is where, where, where understanding scripture comes into play, especially, especially when you're going through things in life. Most churches today, they're going to give you a lot of rhetoric. They're going to give you a feel-good message. They're going to tip of your flesh, and you're going to feel great when you leave, and you're going to feel good. But my job here at Contemporary Living is to make sure that when you leave our page, when you done, and when you're done watching our television show, that I have given you some substance, I have given you some detail, and I have given you some things to live by in your life. And understanding patience in the midst of the storm is very important because we're all going to go through some trials and tribulations. We all have our, we all have our own battles, but you must have comfort in the scriptures and comfort in God as a believer in Christ, understanding that God is going to work things out for you in the midst of your storms, in the midst of your tribulations, no matter what you're going through. So when you ask God, he may not come when you think he should come but he is going to come because he's just and faithful to do that as i read on romans chapter 8 verse 25 through 28 reads but if we hope for that we see not then do we with patience wait for it so he said if we hope for what we see not then do we with patience wait for it so we hope and we have patience that God is going to deliver in due time. As I read verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So when we're praying to God, that is a spirit that, will, that is in us that makes intercession for us to God. And that spirit in us knows the will of God. So, like I said, he may not come and answer the way we want, but God knows what's best for us. And a lot of times we think we know what's best for ourselves, but God is the ultimate judge and he knows what's best for each and every one of us. Because I can, I can guarantee you there has been times in your life that God has answered you, but not according to your will. But he has answered you according to his will. As I read on, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them, that, to them who are called according to his purpose. Wow. So all things work together for the good to them that love God. Do you really love God? And I like how in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 reads, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God. So if Philippians is telling you, don't worry about anything. Because if you truly trust in God, and if you truly being taught the scriptures, you don't have to worry. Sometimes people say, I walk around like... You know, I don't ever see you worried or depressed or nothing like that. You know, sometimes me, I'm not perfect. And I get in those, um, t I, I get to the place where maybe I'm discouraged or something like that. But ultimately, ultimately, the majority of the times I'm not. Because I know where my strength lies. I know that God's going to provide. I know who he is. And I know what he can do. So I have comfort in the scriptures. And so, and understanding supplication, what does supplication mean? To ask humbly and earnestly. Are we asking God for things truly, earnestly, and humbly? Are we asking God for things for our own selfish desires? See, God knows the hearts of men. And God also knows what each and every one of us need. And I'm going to read verse 27 one more time, Romans chapter 8. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth the mind of the spirit because he make an intercession for the saints according to the will of God and the spirit goes before you because a lot of times we know not what we should pray and that spirit communicates to God for us in return God communicates to that spirit and God makes the right decision for us in our life so that's why I said this because the spirit it makes it make an intercession for the saints okay 
as we wind down this message as I go to 2 Corinthians chapter verse, chapter 12, verse 8 through 10. Understand, Paul, the apostles, is living in the age of grace. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul is going through some issues. Paul, is, he has some infirmities going on. And infirmity, infirmities can mean sickness or illness, or he has some trials and tribulations that was going on. The Bible let us know that Paul has some infirmities, but it didn't tell us exactly what it was. As I start off in verse, at verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it may depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10 reads, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, and reproaches, and necessities, and persecutions and distress for Christ's sakes, for when I am weak, then am I strong. So, here we see Paul went to God three times. And whatever that problem was, God did not remove that problem. But in verse 9, Paul tells him, that, look Paul, my grace is sufficient. My grace is enough for you. So whatever you're going through, when you try to get your prayers answered, and if you feel that God is not answering, answering, let me reassure you tonight that God's grace is sufficient for each and every one of us. He has done it all. He has done it all for us, and he has done enough. When he came and he laid his life on the line for each and every one of us when he died on Calvary, God has paid the ultimate price. And when Paul had begun to understand that, that's why Paul said he glorified, he glorified God in his infirmities. And that's why Paul said he took pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distress. Paul took pleasure in not having food. Paul took pleasure in being tossed in jail. Paul took pleasure in being running from city to city. Paul took pleasure in being shipwrecked because he understood that God's grace was sufficient and God had paid the ultimate price, and God had did it all for him. So tonight, remember that when you pray to God, and if you feel that he's not answering your prayers, he's going to answer, but probably not according to your will. And if he don't answer, understanding that he is just and faithful enough to answer. Understanding this also as I close out. Remember, I don't care what the religious churches tell you, God is not punishing you because you have sin in your life. All have sin to come short of the glory of God. So a lot of times they say, well, God is not answering your prayers because you got sin in your life. Well, who don't have sin? You point out to me the man or woman that don't have sin, and I tell you that they are lie because the Bible tells you if any man say he has no sin, he's a liar, and the truth of God is not in him. So God is not punishing you under the age of grace because you have sin in your life. All throughout Paul's writing, Paul starts off each chapter talking about peace and grace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when I come back next week, I'm going to talk about spiritual blessings that God has promised each and every one of us. So understanding that God is not, not punishing you, if you feel that he's not answering your prayers, that don't mean that you're in trouble with God whatsoever. That means simply means that God knows what's right for you. God knows the will of God for you because he is God and God knows what's best for you as an individual. So as I close out tonight, I thank God for his unmerited, undeserved favor called grace. For grace is the total absence of any works. You can't work for grace. You can't buy it. You can't sell it. You can't tear it for it. It is simply what God has given to each and every one of us because we believe that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day for our justification. On behalf of myself and my lovely wife, Melissa, and Contemporary Living, be blessed. Have a good night.